This right here is the temporal bone. And it's probably not going to surprise you to know that temporal is in relation to time. And that's because early anatomists realized that hair started to gray right in this area first, or at least that was a very common spot for it to gray first. And so they just kind of decided to name this bone of time or relating to time, which is a really fascinating way to name a structure. Um, but beyond that, the temporal bone is also just going to be endlessly fascinating. And there's so much more to this bone. And to help us learn that, we are going to be using one of Ken Hub's 100% free articles that we've gone ahead and left a link down in the description below. This is a massive article. I strongly encourage you to check this out as we're going through the video. You can follow along and you can read a whole lot more into what we're going to be able to go into today. But let's go ahead and then learn some of the different parts of the temporal bone. And what you see here in green is what we call the squamous part. Now squamous, if you also understand your etymology, so squamous means flat. And if you could feel this bone, it is indeed very flat. Um, and it's actually going to overlap with the parietal bones, but we'll see that later. In fact, we're going to see that this name of the suture here, which is really cool to see. I love looking at cranial bones when they have been removed from the other parts of the skull because you can see just how incredibly jagged some of these sutures can be. But this right here is going to be the squamous suture, but we will get there in due time. So we have the squamous part, but then we also have this portion here, which is part of your, I guess you could say cheekbone. Well, technically, most people would say that the zygomatic bone, which is this right here, is your cheekbone. So it's like this chunk right there. But if you actually follow that, there's this zygomatic arch, which is this whole thing right here, which is a connection between the zygomatic bone and the temporal bone. And so if we look at it from this view, you can see the temporal bone here. And then there is this archway, well, the, the portion of the temporal bone that is going to articulate and form a suture with the zygomatic bone, well, this is called the zygomatic process. The zygomatic bone has a temporal process, so on and so forth. But then we also have the mandibular fossa. So this is where the mandible plugs into. And I think it's best to just look at it from this view because we can see that it forms the temporomandibular joint. Now you've probably heard someone say, ah, I have TMJD. Uh, TMJD is temporomandibular joint dysfunction. And that is where there's just some kind of issue with this joint itself. Maybe uh, there's, t there's tightness, maybe the actual articulating surfaces are a little bit off. There's a few different ways that can manifest. Now, to be clear, what we removed in order to see this is the zygomatic arch, and we've cut a little bit off of the mandible itself. So that would be that lower part of your jaw. And that allows us to see this. But I want you to picture this, like every single time you're talking, your mandible, right, that houses the lower teeth is just slamming into your temporal bone, right? Just slamming right into it. In fact, there's even some fibrocartilage inside of here. And if you remember, fibrocartilage is all about shock absorption. That is a necessity considering just how much impact is happening in this area. Now, let's go down and look at this other image here because this is there's still more to this temporal bone. And now we get to see this thing called the mastoid process. Now, this is one part of something called the petromastoid part. Um, the petromastoid part can be broken down though into two different parts. And this first one is called the mastoid process. And I actually want to look at it from this view right here if we kind of pull it out. Um, so you can feel this thing. So there's like this um, this little flappy thing on the outside of your <laughs> face. This is the external ear. If you go behind it, you're going to feel like there's this rounded. Don't push too hard, by the way, because it's it's not going to feel good. Uh, there's a lot of soft tissue there, but you can feel there's like this rounded portion to the bone. That's the mastoid process. And there are several muscles, but I think there's like three muscles that attach there. But the most famous of them all is the sternocleido mastoid. That's this massive muscle on the anterior lateral surface of your neck is going to come up and actually attach there. So this is the mastoid process. Again, we can look at it from this view and you can get a really good understanding. So you can kind of just picture, oh, there's the floppy ear and then you feel right behind it. That is going to be the mastoid process. But then, like I mentioned, the mastoid process belongs to something called the petromastoid part. And so the petro or the petrous part is this is where the really interesting stuff of the temporal bone is going to be located. So what you're seeing in this view is what is, uh, this is a mid-sagittal cut. So it's like someone's cut the head right down the middle and we have equal halves 
left and right halves of the cranium and the skull or the facial skeleton as well. And so what you're seeing here, all of this is the petrous part. So you might probably have a, well, you should have a pretty good understanding of what would be in here would be the brain. Um, but inside of the petrous part, this is where you're going to find the middle and inner ears, right? So the middle ear has the smallest bones um, of the entire body that are going to help kind of like direct sound towards the inner ear, which the inner ear is going to have balance as well as hearing. And then um, coming out of the temporal bone, that's where you're going to have the vestibulocochlear nerve, which is going to go to the brain. And then that is going to help us hear and pr or process hearing process balancing inside of the central nervous system. But this is the petrous part so this is the most medial part of the temporal bone and it's where in my opinion at least where all the really truly exciting stuff about the temporal bone is going to be located now there's more here that I'm actually going to skip over but this just shows you the value of our uh, articles again this is 100% free link down in the description below and I love looking at these images here because it just kind of puts everything there for you um, you get to see just everything clearly labeled, just beautiful artwork. But what's really cool is watch this. If we go down, you can also see an image of what it looks like on the medial side, right? So this would be inside of the neurocranium or that cranial vault you know, inside of the skull where the brain would be. You can see a whole lot of different bony landmarks. Super, super cool. And in fact, it doesn't end there. We even have an inferior image of this. So uh, super cool. Super cool to just be able to see these how they are. But what I want to do now is kind of come down here and look at this here. This is going to be the sutures. Now, sutures, um, we can see several on this image, are just going to be the joints where different cranial bones are connecting, right? So for example, this would be the frontal bone. This would be the parietal bone. We can see the sphenoid right here. We see the temporal bone. We see the zygomatic bone. All of them are connected via these joints, right? These joints are called sutures, and sutures have different shapes to them, you know, anywhere from plain, squamous, serrate, denticulate, they have all sorts of different names, but we also give names to that particular suture. So we name the form that they take, right? So for example, if you have two jagged edges kind of going together, we call that a serrate shaped suture, but then we also name that particular suture. So for example, this right here is a serrate suture, but it's called the coronal suture. Well, this right here, this is gonna really be impressive. This is called a squamous suture in terms of its shape because you have two overlapping surfaces. And guess what we call it? This is also the squamous suture, which is awesome. I love when it lines up like that. But this is basically where the temporal bone and the parietal bones are just kind of sliding on top of each other. And that's gonna increase the surface area that they are connected. Um, and then you can also see right here the temporomandibular joint from the posterior side, which is also pretty cool to see. I don't know. I like looking at the skull from this view. It's been cut a bit so we can see like inside of the neurocranium in there. But you can also see like the septum. You can see the different conches. It's just a very, very cool look. But again, going back here, you can see that squamous suture that is going to be right there. Now. Other things you're going to see inside of this article, that is where we're going to leave it for now. You're going to see um, a premium feature that we have, and we put this in all of our articles. This is our quiz mode. And as we keep going down, you can see it discusses muscles. You can see that it's discussing other different landmarks. And we even then can link to a temporal bone study unit. Our study units are also going to be premium features that I strongly, strongly encourage you to check out. And then whenever we can, we like to provide some clinical notes at the end of these articles just to help you understand where things can go wrong <laughs> when it comes to the anatomy. All of this is going to be part of our articles. This is such a great one. Again, we're going to put a link down in the description below for you to go ahead and check this out yourself. Now, while you're down there, if you could go ahead and leave a like, little things like that go a long way and help this video perform better in the all-powerful YouTube algorithm. And while you're also down there, why don't you leave us a comment? Let us know what you liked about this video, what you wish we would have covered, anything and everything. We are more than happy to hear your feedback. But thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you next time.